Hey guys, Chrissy from the future coming to you here and just before we get into this video I just wanted to say that in the coming weeks I would like to do another Q&A. It's been a while since I've done one so if you have any questions about Avery, her conditions, her equipment, anything new that's happened recently or just life in general, any questions leave them below and I will gather them all up for a Q&A and hopefully I should be able to film that then within the next couple of weeks for you guys. So um, yeah, just wanted to pop on and say that and um, enjoy the video. Hey guys, or oh, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to a new video. Today's Thursday, and if you watched my last vlog, then you will know today is a very, very, very busy day for us. Um, I'm going to try and make this video uh, kind of over just today. We'll see if I actually manage to get enough footage by the end of the day, but today, not even today, this whole week has just been insanely busy. Um, so yesterday Avery had her orthotics appointment, she went to get her new splints and gaiters. She went for a fitting a few weeks ago now and they were finally ready so I've got them here to show you. So the splints are these ones. We went a little bit more adventurous with the pattern this time. If you remember her last ones were just plain pink. These ones have like peace and love signs all over them which i think was really really cute um honestly i mean they are bigger than her last ones the only reason why she's got new ones is just because she's grown out of her um other ones and if i compare them to her old ones they are definitely longer um as you can see but i think they're slightly more slender i mean if you look at them kind of head on they look more slender than the old ones and i don't know if maybe these are just have been better molded around her feet i hope they're not going to be uncomfortable on her even the kind of calf is slimmer or maybe she is just slimmer and i've just not noticed i mean i know that she's slim and long anyway um but yeah, these just look a bit slimmer, um, but they are longer. He did fit them to her. These ones have a little bit more of a lip here and he did actually take the heat gun on them yesterday and just pulled out the side a little bit just so it wasn't rubbing on her kind of um, foot near her toes. Um, so she wore these on the way home from the hospital yesterday. And also we checked, they do still fit within the billy boots as well. So she's gonna get a bit more use out of those, which is really, really nice. Um, one of you guys very kindly sent Avery those billy boots and um, so appreciative because we've had so much use out of them and we still haven't really been able to find a shoe that we think will go over them splints. Anyway, those are the new splints and then the gaiters. Now I was mistaken from the ones that the technician showed me at the fitting. I thought these gaiters were going to be plastic, but they're not. They are still kind of semi soft. They are a little bit more rigid than the kind of gaiters that Avery's physio gave us to practice with. And these ones are custom. Do you know what? There's Velcro everything everywhere at the moment. Sorry guys, my camera battery died. So we did a little bit of a position shift. So Avery's gaiters. Um, they are different. Um, the left and the right. Um, if you have been following, then you will know that Avery's uh, left leg is tighter than her right. 
and it doesn't straighten out fully. I know, it's okay. I will give you Mr. Bean back in a minute. Don't you want to say hello to all your friends? Yeah? I hope that was a yeah. So this is the right one. <laughs> it's okay. This is the right one, and this one is completely straight. And um, essentially, if you can kind of get to them around all of the Velcro, um, the inside just looks like that. And um, her leg goes, like her, the top of her leg, her thigh goes here, her little foot comes out the end here, and then I just wrap this around and then bring all of that Velcro all the way around it. And that keeps her leg nice and straight. They are nice and soft, but they do have kind of, um, oh, pudding. They do have um, metal splints in them to keep her leg straight. And then the left one um, is on a bit more of a bend, as you can see here. So it goes on in the same way. This one only has three straps instead of four. Um, her leg will go in like that and then I'll wrap it around and this little um, this little bend here will sit at the back of her knee and um, you can actually see here um, just there there is the metal splint that I was talking about but on this one they are bent these are at a 25 degree angle the orthotic technician said that her leg um, looked as though it was about at a 30 degree angle he did measure it um, so he's put the splint at a 25 degree angle so that she gets a little bit of a stretch out of it but obviously we can't make it straight that would be incredibly unco incredibly uncomfortable for Avery um, because it's it's doing something that her body can't naturally do so we've got that one at a bend and the aim of that really is to prevent it from getting worse really we know it's not something that we're going to be able to fix Avery has cerebral palsy it's not likely we're going to be able to fix it but we can manage it and try and stop it from getting any worse um so she did wear them last night in bed and um she tolerated them really well she's not tolerating me holding her at the minute she tolerated them really well however she was completely zonked last night she was so tired she didn't stir when i put them on um because i did wait until she'd fallen to sleep to put them on um once i got them on her she was fine um, she didn't seem distressed this morning when she woke up either, even though, you know, she had these things on her legs that she wasn't used to. Ah! Oh, I will say that um, I didn't put them on her very tight last night. Um, Josh and I were just a bit worried that they would maybe cut off the circulation in her legs. And I know they won't, but I just wanted to put them on loosely last night, especially since it was her first time wearing them. Um, you know, she's gone to sleep with nothing on and she's waking up with this weird sensation in her legs I didn't want it to be too uncomfortable for her um, But I'm glad that she tolerated them and now the plan is for her to wear them every night um, Even though these aren't plastic. She can't wear them in the day They do have a pretty strong metal support in them So she could injure herself if she was to get really dystonic Obviously the kind of advice and guidance is much different for children that don't have dystonia or even Avery in particular Every child is different but Avery's physio has advised me not to use them in the daytime so that she doesn't injure herself But we have them now we're gonna give them a good go and see if we can just help her leg a little bit it also helps to keep the leg um, in a straight position in the sense that it's not, the knee isn't bending outwards because Avery's knee tends to bend outwards um, with that leg not being straight. And that then causes, it's okay, that then causes her hip to kind of bend outwards as well. And over time um, that could cause her even more issues like hip dysplasia. So we're just trying to prevent it or prolong the, um, the, the, bad effects basically prolong the prolong the period of time before these things happen basically because we're never going to be able to stop everything it will get worse as she gets bigger and older and all we can do really is try and make her as comfortable as possible especially while she's developing especially while she's growing the more we can kind of delay things while she is developing and growing the more likely it is that she's not going to develop a lot of you know even worse problems when she's bigger if we can get her bones to kind of grow in the way that they should then she's got a pretty good shot so 
yeah that is what we did yesterday um obviously avery is not dressed at the moment that is on my to-do list for this morning avery has two appointments today they're both at the hospital and they are not at the same time and i can't stay at the hospital between the two i have to come home for the school run so we have two bus journeys today four if you include the return journey and uh, a school run in between so it's going to be really busy really manic we're not going to get home until way past dinner time but i have a to-do list as long as my arm for this morning and not a lot of time to do it because i need to get it all done before avery's feed because as soon as avery's feed is done then um yeah then um then we need to go, basically. So on the way home from the hospital yesterday, Avery and I actually popped into TK Maxx. Not that I needed anything, but I know that they're bringing out a lot of their Christmas stuff now. So I just wanted to have a browse. And I did actually pick up a couple of things. So I thought I would share you, share you, share with you. Today's not gonna be a good day, is it? Share with you what I picked up. So. First thing I found was a lovely new Christmas mug. I really like this one. It's kind of got that sort of unfinished ceramic bottom that I really like. And it just has a little kind of wreath star with the word peace inside it. Um, I do already have quite a selection of Christmas mugs. Um, you might remember from uh, last year. I was thinking this year I might part with some of my more crazy novelty mugs, you know, the kind of ones that you just love the look of but you can't drink out of them. I might part with some of those and um, replace them with some more practical mugs but also this is much more my aesthetic at the moment. Um, sticking along the Christmas theme. I also picked up two bowls. So on my um, shelving unit, I will show you in a minute, I've got a little stack of bowls that I quite like the look of. And I thought that this would be a nice kind of seasonal replacement up there. I really liked the colour. I'm not going to lie. I'm not the biggest fan of red, but you can't really avoid red at Christmas time, can you? And it is very festive. And all of the, they had lots of different um styles of these as a matter of fact if you are on the hunt for some christmas kind of tableware or serveware they've got a lot in tk maxx at the moment um they all kind of had red in them all the different styles i liked this one the most because i really liked the color of the outside and the simplicity of just the kind of green and the trees and on the inside it's just got sort of trees and reindeer and this was a set of two for 5 99 which I thought was really good. And I thought these would make really nice kind of picky bowls. We love to do snack nights over Christmas. We love to do like just picky food over the day, over Christmas time as well. We like to just lay loads of food out on the table and pick at that throughout the day instead of cooking. So I picked them up. And then last but not least, this was in the clearance section. And I know it's really random, but I actually spotted this a few weeks ago and it wasn't in the clearance section then. And I liked the look of it. I just thought this would look really nice on my shelving unit, although it is getting a little bit cluttered now. But I know that kind of, if when we move, I will hopefully be able to decorate the way I want and move my decor around a little bit and make my shelves a little bit less cluttered. Um, but I just, I like the look of it. I think it's just a planter. Um, but I think I just like the rustic look of it and this was only two pounds So I thought I would grab it a nice little Decorative piece. These are the little bowls. I was talking about so I just thought over Christmas time in replacement um, The little Christmas bowls or even one of them with the wooden bowl would look really nice here And then I think just for now I'm gonna pop this one Right there that'll do. I mean, yeah, this is looking incredibly cluttered at the moment. That's a little bit wonky that way that's better yeah incredibly cluttered a little bit too much on these shelves for my liking at the moment but here's the thing i love everything that's on here and i wouldn't know what to take off it so i think i'm just gonna have to wait until i have a bit more space and then i'll be able to declutter this area a little bit and use use other space that i will hopefully have someday so i desperately need to crack on with my to-do list i need to get avery dressed i need to try and clean the house a bit because it's an absolute mess i've got polystyrene everywhere i need to um order my food shopping um and i've got <laughs> okay so apparently i've got about half an hour to do it all 
before i crack on though i do just want to show you my sideboard because i have actually finished it here it is so verdict i love the style i love the color however this was incredibly cheap it was an absolute steal and let me tell you i was scouring the internet for ages and i know that this was an absolute steal this cost me 90 pounds and i actually wanted it because the one that i did have my heart set on don't mind avery the one i did have my heart set on um was in next and it was similar to this but not the same and it was 950 pounds and i just cannot justify spending that much on a piece of furniture especially when we know we're not going to stay in this house and i don't know if it would fit somewhere else so i've settled on this for now but i can definitely say you can tell that it's cheap um when i first opened it i said this in my last video it's okay pudding i've turned mr bean down for a second so she's she's uh contesting um i said in my last vlog that i mentioned this little chip in the top um as i've kind of been building it and putting it together i've just noticed that the vinyl um the kind of coating does kind of come away easy there's another little bit there on the drawer so yeah it's cheap the quality is cheap and you can definitely tell who knows, maybe one day I will be in the position to afford the £950 one that I really want, but I just can't see that happening. And I don't know if you guys remember, but these are the little handles that I bought from Timu. The ones it came with were more of a silver and I didn't like that. And I think this just makes it look a little bit more rustic, but I love the color of it. Like this is the kind of wood that I really like, that oak and it's not too cool and it's not too warm it's kind of a, an in between and it is i think it is just oak but i love it so definitely just gonna live with this for as long as it will last me i don't anticipate it to last forever but i'm glad i bought it because i do really love the style of it and this has just given me so much inspiration on how i want my home to look this with just kind of lots of whites and neutrals and creams and beiges i think would look so so nice obviously it doesn't look very good in this room because the wood on the kind of built-ins are very orange um but we're just going to ignore that because i don't like it anyway and we're going to focus on this so yeah i'm happy with it but i don't know if i'd recommend it if it's something you want to last for a while because it's definitely cheap and therefore cheap quality Madam is just having her feed now. Um, definitely haven't gotten through my to-do list. I still haven't hoovered the floors. If I don't get time to do it before we have to leave, then it will just have to wait. Um, Avery's dressed, which is the main thing, so we couldn't take you out in your pyjamas, could we? Hey. So, the first appointment we have today is actually Avery's CPIP, and this is the appointment that we went to a month ago. I didn't realise it was in October and not September. So it's finally come round again. It doesn't feel like that long ago that we went for the first time and it's been a month, like that time has flown by. Um, so basically this appointment, um, physios will kind of check Avery's legs and hips and back and kind of test her range of motion, see what her muscle tone is like. Um, they do a lot of talk in terms of degrees and numbers and a lot of it I don't understand. All I know is um, she was looking good last time, the last CPIP she had, except her left ham hamstring. Her left hamstring, um, they said was still in the green, but it was kind of, it was on the kind of higher end of the green, more going into the amber. So something that we needed to just keep our eye out for and then as we know now, Avery's left leg is much tighter than her right. So it has gotten worse. I'm anticipating the CPIP to show that. Um, but hopefully um, the rest of her joints and everything are doing okay. Um, really? 
so that's appointment one appointment two this afternoon after the school run is neurology Yay. avery's not seen the neurologist since the complex movement disorder clinic that we went to in april so it's been a while and i think at this appointment we're going to find out what we're doing next basically um what medicine we're going to try next what is kind of top priority and i have got a feeling um the neurologist is keen to try clonidine next because it is a med to try and target the dystonia i'm happy to kind of go along with whatever the doctor think thinks is best at this point because i know there's a long list of things that we want to do and i'm not preferable to any of them really over the other i'm not gonna lie it puts me on edge knowing that we will be moving to clonidine not because of the clonidine um, I mean, there are risks with clonidine. She will need to be closely watched whenever she has a med increase. Um, but because I know that it's the second to last medicine that we'll be trying before we're out of options in terms of um, drugs. <coughs> it's okay. After that, our options are neurosurgery. And that's a terrifying thought. And it's something that me and Josh have kind of... We've, thought about in passing we've talked about in passing but it's not come to the point where we felt like we've had to really sit and research do our due diligence and make a decision because we felt like we're not there yet and the closer we get like the more medications we go through and don't work it just it feels like it's going to end up coming up and biting us on the bum and we're just not going to be prepared not so much in terms of you know physically prepared but emotionally prepared we can do as much research as we want. We can, you know, logically see if something's going to be better or worse for Avery and if something's worth it. But it doesn't take away the emotional effect, like the emotional impact. It doesn't take away the kind of fear of knowing that we could potentially be um, sending Avery for brain surgery. Um, it's a terrifying thought. So I know that our two options in terms of neurosurgery are the baclofen pump and deep brain stimulation um, both of those things they do at bristol hospital um i know the baclofen pump is out for a long time anyway because she needs to be a certain size a certain weight and i don't think she's there yet dbs can be done at any age according to avery's neurologist but it's 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 the idea of somebody going in and operating on her brain you know but gonna go to this appointment we're gonna catch up see where we're at see where we go next and see what he thinks in terms of avery in terms of avery's dystonia i think it's about the same honestly it's it's difficult for us now to kind of give a measurement on how good or bad it is because we've gotten so used to it it's just kind of part of who avery is and what she does and we do notice that it gets worse when she's ill and her threshold lowers but in terms of like over time i don't think it's changed but i do think we've gotten used to it and i mean I, you guys watch the videos you'll be able to see kind of when she stretches like i know she just did it a minute ago um she stretched to the point where i have to bend back but that is just so it's just become something i do now it's become something avery does and i've gotten used to it which I don't know how to feel about really because I don't want to feel as though because we've gotten used to it we stopped trying to treat it so yeah I'm gonna finish Avery's feed I'm gonna see if I can squeeze in five minutes to whiz the hoover around the house because I'm just sitting here looking at polystyrene everywhere and it's driving me batty and then we are gonna head to the hospital for Avery's CPIP luckily my bus ticket will extend to the trip we have to take after the school run I will have to buy another one for Zach and Eli <laughs> so that's something isn't it um and then when we get back i've got to do the boys sandwiches for tomorrow get avery's meds and stuff ready and get her feed sorted out before we pick the boys up from school because as soon as i get the boys from school we have to head straight to the bus stop there's not going to be any time to come home and i really hope they're out on time today because the school have a habit not the school in general but the boys teachers have a habit of them coming out late and that drives me insane because we'd be penalized for taking them into school late um so hopefully they're out on time and we've got a dash to the bus stop to get to Avery's neurology appointment. <sighs> so, yeah, let the chaos commence. Of 
appointment one is done. I am just doing up all of Avery's meds for tonight so that that's done and out the way. Um, <clears throat> so the C-Pip, it actually looks like both of her legs have gotten a little bit tighter. So the last one she had was six months ago. And um, like I said, they talk a lot in numbers and degrees. Um, a lot of that I don't understand, but she explained to me that um, in terms of what the numbers were six months ago and what they are now, it looks like both legs are slightly tighter. She said um, her hip, her left hip is one degree away from being in the amber zone. And in terms of her knees, they are both in the amber zone. So they do a stretch where they kind of bring Avery's leg up. So say this is her body, this is her leg. They bring her leg up and then if that's her kind of knee joint here, they bring the bottom part of the leg up like that. And obviously if you tried to do that yourself, you wouldn't be able to stretch it all the way unless you're incredibly flexible. Um, but that stretch there, both legs were tighter, both legs are in the amber. And then when they straightened her legs out, they could stretch her right leg out almost all the way last time they could stretch them both out completely so her number was zero this time i think her right leg might have been at an eight her left leg um i think was at a 20 so the higher the number the worse it is so both legs have gotten a bit worse which is a little bit unnerving um i did actually take a picture of all these numbers that they were writing down just in case any of you are familiar with the cpip or um are interested in actually knowing what her numbers were i can see if i can add a picture of the screen i'm just not 100 percent sure if it's got any kind of personal information on the form or not but if it doesn't then i can leave a picture on the screen of what her numbers look like compared to what they were like six months ago and it also gave a um a baseline number basically of what is normal or, or what what point it becomes abnormal if that makes sense so the left leg was to be expected that is a bit worse however i didn't expect the right leg to be worse as well but apparently it is so all we can do really is what we continue doing getting her in our stander doing her stretches um which doesn't look very good for me this week because we've been very slack on the stander just because of how busy we've been and nursery days she's absolutely zonked so it's just it's hard at the moment and i asked um i think it's a physio that does it and i asked her point blank based on her numbers and where she was at six months ago where she's at now does it look like she is at risk of hip dysplasia and she said um usually when there's any kind of high tone there's always a risk but based on the fact that um the numbers are worse than what they were six months ago then she is at risk of hip dysplasia so i mean i guess i knew that i did i just wasn't expecting both legs to be tighter i suppose and that's kind of concerned me a little bit more anyway on the way home we um rolled through dog poo which is just lovely it really irritates me when people don't pick up their dog poo because it's always in the middle of the path I happened to be on the phone at the time with um, someone trying to book in another appointment for Avery. Didn't realise it was there until I smelt it. So that's um, that's just just great. <laughs> it's not the first time we've done it either. We did it on the way to nursery a few weeks ago. So just as the poo had managed to clear itself off the wheel, we've got another fresh load. So yeah, just getting Avery's meds done. And then um, it'll be time to go get the boys from the school run. And time to head back to the hospital. We've literally been home half an hour and we've got a head straight back there. I'm hoping that me having a picture of those results is helpful to the neurologist as well. Because when we went to the one sec, I need the syringe. When we went to the complex movement clinic movement movement clinic with him in April. Can you hear Avery? <laughs> when we went to the complex movement clinic with him in April, he did he did have um, physios that did similar sort of range of motion style tests, and he said that it's helpful for ha for him to have those results in an appointment. So I figured I'd take a picture and show it to him and see if it was helpful for this appointment. But 
at least the first appointment is done and over with. Oh, we also saw Avery's old OT when we were there as well, which was really nice. We've not seen her since January. Um, yeah, gonna get all this stuff together. I've still got to make a boy sandwiches for tomorrow. I might as well make Josh's sandwiches for him as well. And then it's time to head out to another appointment. I probably won't get any B-roll from this little uh, venture out just because um, I have both the boys with me as well. And um, I will need my attention, especially since it's gonna be quite the rush getting to the hospital. Um, but I will probably catch you up um, later on this evening on how neurology went. Evening guys, we're home. It is currently quarter to six. I've already got my pajamas on. That's what I did the second we walked through the door. I'm so tired, my back is in protest, walking up and down that hill so many times today. I'm just sorting our dinner out. We are just having chicken baguettes tonight. I like to put the chicken in like a mustard mayo. Um, I cooked chicken yesterday, so <clears throat> got plenty of chicken. I'm just chopping up some cucumber. So, <laughs> neurology. We have a plan which is what I wanted out of this appointment. So I'm really pleased with that. He kind of wrote it down on a piece of paper in almost like a flow chart form. And I found that incredibly helpful. So the plan is, first we are going to tackle the seizure meds. So we're gonna start to bring Avery off of the Kepra. If all goes well, great. If not, and she starts to have seizures, we have two options. We either bring the Kepra back up or we bring the Tapiramate up. The goal is to try and get her just on one seizure med, but obviously only time will really tell with that. If she starts having seizures when she's lowering on the Kepra, then obviously we need to rethink. If she doesn't have any other seizures and that all goes well, the next step is we are going to try trihexafenadil again for Avery's dystonia. We tried it when she was young, like really small. And when we tried to increase the dose, she ended up getting night sweats and didn't sleep through the night very well. And we still had a lot of options then, so we decided to come off that and try something different. Um, we are running out of options in terms of meds now. And considering clonidine has the risk of lowering blood pressure and heart rate, um, the neurologist thinks that it's worth trying the trihexafenadil first. Um, if that goes well, great. If not, then we're gonna try the clonidine. But if it does go well, the next step after that is to start to decrease the baclofen. Now, the neurologist doesn't want to completely get rid of the baclofen, which I find it really funny because um, the neurologist wasn't keen on trying the baclofen in the first place. That was me and Josh that brought that forward and asked if we could try that. However, he said, he is starting to notice Avery's tone. He used to be convinced that Avery had very little um, spasticity and it was mostly dystonia. He has started to notice her tone and he actually showed us something that, um, I won't say is cool because it's actually not nice at all, but it was interesting to see. Um, it was another way for us to kind of confirm that Avery's left leg is worse than her right as well. Um, he kind of positioned Avery's left leg in a certain way and tapped it and it started to like judder uh, like almost tremble or twitch over and over and over again and he said that's clonus i'd never heard of clonus before uh, but basically the reason why it didn't stop is because the brain hadn't stopped giving the feedback to the muscle it's almost like a reflex um and he said that the brain hadn't stopped giving that feedback to that leg when it should have whereas when he did it with the right leg she had a little bit a couple of twitches and then it stopped completely. So that was just more proof that her left leg is worse than her right. But he said um, he could feel the tone and he didn't want to completely get rid of baclofen. And he said, even when we do start to lower the baclofen, he's gonna want a lot of input from the physiotherapist just to make sure that that leg isn't getting worse because then um, essentially her joints could almost lock because the tendons can shorten um, but that's a little ways down the line. He did say this whole process is going to take a few months and we knew it would. 
He said he would normally be obliged to try two things at once, but I have said we don't want to try more than one thing at once this time round. We've done that too many times and we can never just really pinpoint what's working and what's not and what's causing side effects and what's not. So then I brought up the blended diet because obviously this is on our list of things. And he said that after we've gotten through what we've already talked about, I do think um, blended diet would be um, a good way to go. Um, he did say it might be worth us having another appointment with Avery's gastroenterologist. So we have a plan, which I'm pleased with. So I came out of that appointment um, with what I wanted, really. He is going to review her again in six months time, which is the norm for Avery. Um, he thinks the Botox will really help when we do eventually get um, an appointment for that. Um, so yeah, I think it went well. I'm glad we went. I'm just waiting for Josh to come home from work now. I'm surprised that I'm back before him, to be honest. He's working really long hours at the moment. Um, I'm just waiting for him to come back and I'm going to kind of go through all of that with him. Make sure he knows the plan. Make sure he's happy with it. Uh, but yeah, first step is to lower the Kepra. So that will be nerve-wracking, but I'm hoping it works. I'm hoping Avery doesn't have seizures because it would be nice to have less medication. Although the neurologist did say um, that for a child like Avery, with the severity of her condition, um, it is the norm to be on multiple medications for, for epilepsy, multiple medications for dystonia, multiple medications for tone. He said, you know, she's not, in the grand scheme of things, she's not actually on a lot of medications. And I just said, yeah, and I'm prepared for that. I'm prepared for her to need more medication. But I just want to eliminate the ones that necessarily aren't working instead of just adding them on, adding them on, adding them on, then eventually we just don't know what's working and what's not. So we're going to try and get rid of the Kepra, we're going to try and lower the dose of Baclofen and see how that goes. Um, try Hexafenadil, we have tried before like I said, but we're just going to give it another go. So yeah, I'm so glad that this day is over. Tomorrow I've actually got a day planned with my mum which I'm really looking forward to. Um, I'm probably going to pick up the camera again tomorrow but in a new vlog so I'm going to close this one out here. Hopefully I've got enough footage for it to be a decent length vlog um, but thank you guys so much for spending the day with me and um, rushing around with me as chaotic as it was. And um, I will see you guys in a few days with another video. Bye guys.